Hello, Floss Tube. Um, today we have a special guest. This is Granddaddy Beck, Frank Beck Sr., my father in law, and he's come to say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and he's going to talk about the samplers that he and my mother in law collected um, over. When did you start collecting them? Many years ago, it seems like. Uh, I was married for 58 years, and I guess uh, after I got out of the Army, uh, probably starting in, oh, maybe 1965 or 1970, we would start traveling to Europe a lot, and uh, particularly to England, where uh, Jane and I, obviously, I put the money up, and Jane did the, the, the uh, figuring out what's great. And we bought a lot of these in, uh, in England, Cotswolds and London at the uh, various shows. Okay, so we have a few to show. I'm going to take off my glasses because they're a little reflective. I don't know if yours are as reflective as mine. doesn't seem like it. You want to go ahead and hold it up and talk about it or do you want me to hold it? Here, I'll hold it and you can talk about it. Okay. Well, one Sorry. of the things that uh, Jane, Jane liked was a date. We always tried to buy these samplers that had a date so we could say, okay, this was 1815 or, or whatever. We didn't want something that was in the 20th century. And uh, so sometimes very hard to find something like that. And we always wanted uh, pictures of them, uh, little people or little trees or something like that. And that always kind of hit us. We just want, didn't want to see a bunch of numbers or a bunch of letters. So as you look at it, I think there's a little girl or something down the little bottom hand corner there. Let's see. This one's got flowers. Is there anything on that one? No, it says 1828. Uh, sorry, we're getting a lot of reflection of lights and, and wall and stuff. Um, let's see if I can... There we go. Let me, yeah, okay, let's see if we can turn the lights out or down. Yeah, up above then, yeah. Okay. All right. I thought there was a little Continue. Girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah a little girl Continue. Now. While I'm trying to adjust these lights here. Does that help? Yeah, I think better. That's better. Is that better? Um, yeah, this one here, I think you just said it was 1828. And of course, it tells the little girl that did it. Let's see what it I says on it. It says February 15th, 1828, Dinah Brockton, age nine years. Now it's hard to believe that somebody nine years old can do something this beautiful. I suspect oh, yeah. that mama kind of helped a little bit too, but there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that's much better. Much better. Okay, my chandelier is reflecting up there, but yeah, that helped with the lights down. Okay, and then we have another one that they Here's another collected. One. And uh, this dated 1818. Now that's, think about, it, use your math, that's nearly 200 years ago. Can you mm -hmm. believe that? And you know, it looks like it's a little, little shady or dark, but that's 200 years ago, and you can just read everything about it. And of course, most of these say somewhere that we're going to heaven. I don't know yeah, why yeah. it is. But we're going to heaven. <laughs> yeah, this says, go ahead and read, can you read it? And it says, uh, we'll come to heaven together. Oh, uh, let us go to heaven together, or yet there is room for us and our dear friends. Mary, uh, Mary Fox. Mary Fox did this work age 13, looks like age 13. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it was in June, June 1818. Like I said, it's almost 200 years old. Mm -hmm. It's not perfectly preserved, but it's enough that you can see all the pictures and make out everything. It's just amazing. Yeah, this is on pretty fine linen, pretty small X's here. It's all cross stitch, all cross stitches. And you can actually, the the linen is so fine, you can actually see where she's carried the threads um, between some of them. And it's this one is the one that's got 
a little a little man. It's got a dog. Looks like a crown on each <laughs> each corner, and some pine trees. A bird on top of the house. This is really cute, and little little animals around the board the bottom border. Look at all. This is very very motif heavy. That's nice. Look at the little house with five windows and all the, I love all these little animals down here in the grass. And then it's got that nice little border. There's the bird on top of the house. Got matching fruit baskets. And then these trees, I've seen these before where they have, you know, just like the balls on the outside of the, like a tree shape or something. There's a whole bunch of different ones like that. She liked those. She did a lot of those up there. And her writing is at the top. Very nice. Okay. And this actually, on the back of it, has an old framing. I don't know what that says. Uh, boots Chemists. Picture framing, art, documents, boots, something. Must be Europe, somewhere in England. Anyway, do you remember? Do you remember about what these cost when you were were collecting them? Well, I would say that <clears throat> I would use a range of something like eighty-five dollars to oh maybe two hundred dollars. Okay. That would be the range. We didn't want. To, I'm sure we never paid four or five hundred dollars for them. I'm not sure. Yeah. But. Uh, uh, you know, things were less expensive in those days, obviously. Yeah, 85 would be a great price for a 200-year-old yeah. a sampler. Yeah. 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 And um, Mama, Mama's, the, what, the, what the kids call, yeah. called my, my mother-in-law, my, my Jane. <laughs> my wife. And um, she had a, quite a collection of the Antiques magazine and I remember when uh, we were first married back in the early 80s, going over there and we would look in the magazines. She would show me samplers and um, stump work. I, I didn't know what stump work was until my mother-in-law showed me. She loved stump work and showed me a lot of articles on those in the magazines. And I think you had like, what? how many magazines did you have? Well, <laughs> hundreds. We, we subscribed to antiques magazine mm -hmm. uh, for uh, I'm saying 20 years yeah and uh, once a month 20 years that's 320 copies that my whatever and uh, the magazines were kind of thick and heavy paper and uh, we had a whole chest a wall chest literally full of those magazines and uh, I saved them over the years I think I missed one month. I don't know whatever happened to that one month. So I had uh, 20, 20 uh, years of magazines. Well, 200 and something. 240, <laughs> I used to say 300, 240, uh, 239, 239 of those magazines. Wow. And uh, when we left the house, we left them there. So they became junk or yeah. whatever. <laughs> They're gone forever. Yeah, that's true. And then I have some that I, I don't know if I've shown these. I might have shown this one, but I'm working, as I told y'all, I'm, I'm going to let you in on my framing <laughs> as soon as I get all the parts together. I actually started to work on it, took it apart. Um, I know I, I posted this on um, one of the sampler Facebook pages that when I was taking this, this one apart, this is from... This was started, I may have shown you this, Betty Gladwin Toddy, age 13, started at February 1786 and finished it um, October 1786. So this is my oldest and it was on, when I took it apart, the back looked like this. This is why we don't use acidic paper Look, you can almost see the whole sampler <laughs> in white against the, this is all that acid that came through. This is where it was sitting and you can see the writing and you can see down here her little wreathed areas where she put the date. So that's bad. 
that's why I'm reframing it. And so the framing that I have to use is this um, never before, I never had any acid on it. It isn't, you know, um, deacidified. It just has never had acid, this um, rag board. And so as I was doing that, um, I took, I don't, and I don't know if I have any of this to show, but I found a little piece of the backing. Oh, I forgot to say that that was um, sewn on, it was machine sewn onto that backing. So it was really hard to get off. I don't know if you can see the little ridges where it was machine sewn on, but I had to pick every little thread out of there and it was tightly sewn. So I'm thinking it, that wasn't done in the 1700s. That had to be in the, what, when was the sewing machine? Like 1870 or something? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know when Singer came around. <laughs> yeah, sometime when the sewing machine came around. But as I was um, taking this off, I, this backing off of there, I realized that, let me show that one again. Okay, okay under here is some, see that lined, lined stuff right there? Okay, so there's lining under there, and there's writing on there, and I, I had a little piece somewhere here, but there's stuff written under there, and the question is, what is it? And it was written with old script, so I'm going to have to figure out if I, if I can even possibly, like, wet this, like, spray it or with water or some undo stuff and see if I can get to the writing and see what was under there. I'd love to know. Maybe it was, we were joking, like maybe it was just a grocery list or something. Okay, and then this is another one that somebody, this is terrible because this one I don't think I've shown. Um, it's so finely done, it looks, it just looks like somebody printed that, but that's all, you know, petty point down here. You've got some black work along the sides. It's all black and this is not dated. It's got the name, the fourth month. Maybe she unpicked it. Maybe she unpicked the date. It doesn't look like it. it. doesn't look like anything was there. Possibly, but, and there's a little bit of missing stuff, but I purchased this at the same time I purchased the other one that I'm going to frame and two others that I'll show you later uh, in another video. But somebody at some point put the, this whole thing had this foam rubber all the way across the back. I was able to get, that's the back, I was able to get that much off of it and now I have to be really careful, carefully get the rest of it off and it is really stuck on there. So. What a crazy thing to do. You never know what they did with with framing back then. Oh, this was down there? Okay, well here's another one. This is the first, I don't know if I ever showed you this one either. This is the first one I purchased. I got this on an online auction. Uh, no, this is not the first one I purchased. Wait a minute, let me think. This is the second one I purchased. And I don't know if I've shown you this one. This is Lata. Kareen Dahl. Ton I can't remember the name. Tonberg. Tonsberg, which I looked up was Belgium, 1838. Got little people right here. Oh, it's so cute. It's got it's got Adam and Eve and the tree and the serpent over here. Right here. And then it's got uh, this looks like a a church with bones in the cemetery or something. I don't know what that is. And then you've got the people, little dog, and maybe a school. This has lots and lots of motifs on it. And you got Jesus on the cross, and you got the stag. Um, cross, I think, the uh, crown. You got the lions. Oh, all kinds of things and a lot of um, like family initials, family monograms, I guess. So I love that one. I got this one for a really good price. And it is um, sewn 
by hand onto this backing. So I want to get it off of there. And on the back, um, it says Edvard Blomquist Torvud Skane, something. It's got a picture of, here, this is what I'm reading, picture of the front of a shop. And there's some pencil writing on here. And at one time I translated it, but I do not have the translation. I think I've got it, you know, in my little sampler histories thing. Yeah, that must be Torv good. I don't know what that is. Anybody read read this? Dutch? So that's another thing. So we're working on I'm working on getting these all deacidified. And hmm, did you now? Did you um, ever con? Did you never bought any up in New England? Well, I'm sure we did. You I, do you think know, you did? We must have had uh, at least eight or ten samplers. So mm -hmm. I'm sure that uh, a couple of them were bought up in the New England area. We we went antiquing up there several times, and uh, you know, majority were bought in England. Mm -hmm. We never bought any in France or any other country because I think the English, uh, that was their nature, and, and the Americans, but I don't think mm -hmm. the French and Germans did much of this. They had other ideas. Yeah, they, they did some. The German ones did, um, I think Scotland's were, oh, tend to be kind of red and green. Um, oh, we showed that one. I've got another one that's kind of red and green. and. Um, France did some, but I don't, not nearly as many as England. I guess they had a lot of schools teaching it. Um, and then did you contact uh, Finkel? Didn't you contact yeah, Finkel? Yeah, uh, one of the major uh, uh, procurers or buyers of antique, uh, antique uh, samplers uh, was, you mentioned the name. And M. Finkel. We, we can talk, can talk. We contacted them several times about ones that they had for sale, but the problem was uh, they were all too expensive. Uh, it was not the eighty-five to two hundred dollars we paid. It was more like the thousands, four hundred to a thousand dollars, because obviously they had to make money, and mm -hmm. obviously they were a little better prepared than these. So we never bought any, but we would go periodically just to see what they had. Oh, so you went to their store. No, uh, and again, in the Antiques magazine, oh, okay. they showed them and showed what the price was. And uh, I think one time in New England, we went by the place and saw things. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was, we never bought anything there again because it's too expensive. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember what the store looked like? No, I do not. Yeah. I think the store may have been more like a house mm -hmm. uh, than just a, a, a big old store. Obviously, up in New England, we went to small towns, and it was in some small town in, in the house in a couple rooms or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you want to comment on? <laughs> no. No, I would really enjoyed shopping. Uh, Jane and I used to enjoy antiquing, and uh, samplers was one thing, and Jane also liked uh, candle uh, holders, candlesticks. Oh, holders. well, let's show some candlesticks. <laughs> Why not? People like to see everything, and you, maybe you can tell them which ones are good and which ones are not good. These are some of the ones that I have. I think I have some more elsewhere, but these happen to be in this room, along with a lot of other things. So, well, I'll so, hold them up, and you can discuss it. How about this one? Well, these are various different designs, and I don't remember or name what the designs are. I do remember that uh, one of the things that you can tell how good a candlestick is, and she is showing this right now, the bottom, how that is molded together or put together, it's smooth. There's no uh, ridges that are around here show cutting with uh, modern technology or modern tooling. It's everything. That one is an old one. That one I'd say uh, probably give or take uh, 17th century, something like that. And that is a very valuable one, and uh, it's not a cheapie. <laughs> now this, and it's this, mine now, ours. I <laughs> uh, see. My husband. This this one looks old, 
but in all fairness is not. If you look at the bottom, you can tell from the bottom, it's got a different, different uh, melding or different getting together. All right, so let's, let's compare the two. It's we kind can... of hard to... Whoop. Whoop. That was just my table. <laughs> well, this is... This... See, this is shiny, and this is not the same texture here. No, this is really thick, really thick and heavy, much heavier. This one's much lighter. Now, here's another one, and I put under it good. You see the bottom again. It's funny that you have to look at the bottom to see how old they are. At least that's what I was told. The way the thing melds together in there. and uh, Smooth. Smooth. Very smooth. So it's like in this part here, or just like all the ridges, everything well, really smooth? The whole thing. The whole thing. The way this is melded together in here, mm -hmm. the lack of of uh, stripes, not stripes, but scratch marks, so to speak, that mm -hmm. meant that it could have been done by machine, machine. Or, or what you call it. Yeah. yeah. That's a pretty one. Here's the front of it. Pretty little one. Oh, and it has this, the push-up yeah. on the side. Now this one, I don't think this is real old. It looks real old, but it just doesn't have that, I don't know, what I call smooth or, or the same kind of feeling underneath it. Looks old. Man. I think this might be a, a reproduction, but I, I'm not an expert. I would say the other ones are older, but this is a different looking one. Mm -hmm. It's got this, uh, there's a name extra for this. little lip thing. Yeah. I don't know if they call it a, not a crown. One of them was called a bell candle, wasn't yeah, this, it, or something? Yeah, this is not a bell candle, but we don't have a bell candle I've here. I've got that, but yeah. it's I think it's in yeah. the other room. Anyway, okay. I thought of another one that you, you need to talk about, so hang in there. <laughs> I'm going to hang in there. Hang in there, and I'll get it. Well, you got to talk about this. Let me let me go back to this one again. Okay. Uh, while she's been gone, I took another look at it, and I think this is not a reproduction. I'm seeing a crack here mm -hmm. that you would not have in a reproduction, mm -hmm. and I see another flaw up here. Like that, stress marks. Yeah, stress marks that show. So I was mistaken. I think this also is a very valuable one, and we could have paid maybe two hundred and fifty dollars for something like this. Wow. And they came back in your suitcase easily. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Many trips. Okay. Now, this one's special. Tell them why that one's special. Well, I don't know. Because <laughs> this is bear, can't, bear grease. Oh, well. Because the she, candlestick she said, is made out of bear grease. So, candlestick. It's probably older than the thing it's sitting in. That's original candle, as she said, made out of bear grease of all things. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, this could be old, but again, I think it's the, the candle's older than the stick. <laughs> I think so too, because it's kind of rough down under there. But but to think it looks that like they, somebody they, made this, so they forged it. To think that they made candles out of bear grease. Mm-hmm. Unique. Because why did they do it? Was it tallow? That was before. Well, they also did whale oil lamps and stuff, too. Any kind of oil, I guess they could somehow make a candlestick out of, or mm -hmm. candle out of. Well, that's very American, though, the bear grease. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh. Okay. Very interesting. But I think that takes care of our antiques, <laughs> our antiquities today. And... Thank you to Frank Beck Sr. Well, thank you for inviting me and trying to get a little knowledge. I may just have a little knowledge, that's about it, but thank you very much. And Jane and I were proud to buy all these things and we're proud to give them to our children.
Of yeah. which she is and one. We, very, and we enjoy very them. Dear child. <laughs> and we enjoy them very much. So bye -bye. anyway, bye-bye. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.